And this is really uh, nothing new as far as the forms of the parabola. We're still using these three. But once we figure out some of the basic info, we're going to be pulling out some different information. So we just went over decreasing and increasing. We're going to be working within that. We're going to learn concave up and down. Really simple. And then this practice problem is uh, the same as the problems we'll have for classwork homework. You don't have to graph everything to figure this information, but for this for this lesson, I'm going to go ahead and graph everything. All right. So let's look at this half pipe with the skater up on top. Remember, everything is increasing or decreasing in respects from left to right. Mm -hmm. Just like in English, it's red. We read from left to right in a lot of other languages. Left to right is how we're going to assess it. We're going to assess this. Otherwise, if you could read right to left, you know, then it would be flipped. We, we don't want things to get messy and confusing. So he's at the top. They are at the top of the skate ramp. As they go down the ramp, which is a parabola, they're decreasing. Basic, easy, right? Just like the roller coaster. We've got an update for you. No. <laughs> All right. So decreasing if we're going downhill from left to right, increasing if we're going uphill left to right. Pretty straightforward. We're going to get that if I gave you a few options here. You'd see here we have a... We have a, uh, a biker ramping, going off a ramp here, jumping in the air. From left to right, what's going on at the beginning of the jump? Increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing and decreasing. Because that's where the height, the height is going up, the height is going back down. Right? Okay, so far so good. This point right here, where it's in between, it's right in between decreasing and increasing, is called this inflection point. Now, what... What does, what does the inflection point, um, what does it have in common with some other things we've learned? Yeah, <laughs> nice Michelle. And voila, it's at the vertex every time. It's also the minimum or maximum, okay? Because if it's at the very top, it's gonna be the maximum. If it's at the very bottom, it's gonna be the minimum. It's really where the vertex is. What's the, the, the line or the axis that it also lies on? Axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Because we know the vertex goes through this axis of symmetry. So this inflection point is really, it's a change from increasing and decreasing, but it's also on the, the line of symmetry, axis of symmetry, and it's the vertex. If we are, if we are trying to figure out what's happening left and right of this point, right? I'm really looking in, in relation to my x values. So if this was x is equal to 3, I'd say x, um, x is decreasing when x is less than 3. I'd say x is increasing when x is greater than 3. Do you see why we would kind of say those things? Yeah. So we're going to use inequalities. I'll, I'll talk about my riddle in a sec here to help us remember. But the basic is the inflection is the change. Remember from chemistry class, delta is change. It's when there's a change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. That's all it is. It's just, uh, there's a bunch of ways now for you to remember that. Hopefully you got it from all directions here. Okay, next we have our happy face, sad face again. This is the same exact thing that we saw in all the forms. So remember that matches with all the forms. When A is positive, happy face, it opens up. When A is negative, sad face, it opens down. Now with this, let's <laughs> shoot, let's shoot. We have one more kind of vocab word here. So concave, think of the word concave like a cave. It goes in, right? It's like a, it's like a little room in here. So this would be like the cave. Um, concave up. When you're feeling up, you're feeling uplifted, you're feeling positive, you might have a happy face on your face here. So A is positive, concave up, because we're feeling uplifted. Just a way to remember, I know, any way you can. When A is negative, we know we had the downward facing frown here. And think about this, concave, that's the word that's in common, but now it's concave down. When you're feeling kind of down, there's plenty of things that happen in life. At times we're gonna feel down, uh, things happen. So you might have a frown on your face, but it doesn't last forever. Concave down is not ultimate. <laughs> Does this make sense? This is kind of what we did before. It's just A. We're just using a word concave to figure out kind of one more 
how else we can label it. And finally, this is basically the example we're going to have to deal with for classwork and for homework. So let's look at this really close. This is exactly what they're going to give you. So they're going to give you some information. They want you just to find one other piece that's going to give you the answer to everything. I'm going to graph it, but again, you won't need to graph it if you know what you're looking for. So first off, a function has a minimum of negative 20. So because it's a minimum, is it happy face or sad face? Sad face. Happy face. Happy face. Happy face. Because, because it's at the very bottom. It's happy face, right? After you do one of these, you'll remember it'll be really quick. Uh, minimum at negative 20 and the y-intercept of 1 and 5. So watch, I'm going to graph this real quick. I'm going to put a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here are my x-intercepts. Is everybody okay with this? We did this, remember that's the last formula. And we're not even going to have to make it equal to 0 and try to solve it. They're just going to give it to you. They're going to say the x-intercepts are 1 and 5. So we just have to graph that and then take out some information. What else do we need in order to graph this? What are we missing? Uh, for this version, if we found the vertex, we could graph it. If we found the y-intercept, it still would be tricky to graph. So let's go for the vertex. It's the main inflection point. Yeah. Y-intercept is helpful, though. With these, we're going to go ahead and stick with that vertex. And it's going to be down here somewhere. Because I know it's a happy face. It has to be down there. Next. Remember that. I keep blinding people with this. All right. Not literally. So here is one of the x-intercepts at 1. Here's the other x-intercept at 5. The vertex is on this line of symmetry, remember? So where should I stop for the line of symmetry? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right in the middle right in the middle. So if you're just going for like, where's the shortcut to figure this out? You know you're given these two x-intercepts. If you find the space in between it, the average between the two numbers, then you know where that vertex is located. So if you didn't know how to do that, you're looking for the x value of the vertex, and you could go 1 plus 5 divided by 2, 6 over 2. Everybody okay with this? We're finding the space, the place right in between the two x-intercepts. So we add them, we combine them, we divide by two. Okay. I'll pause for a moment. Any questions on that so far? No? Straightforward. All right, I'm under 10. Sweet. Okay, here we go. So we just found the x uh, value for the vertex. So I know my vertex definitely is 3, negative 20. How did I know that it was negative 20? Yes, sir. <coughs> because it says the minimum is negative 20, I know that as I go down here and I get to negative 20, that's where I'm going to find the vertex. If I just know that it's a negative 20, it's not super helpful. So I'm glad that I figured out what the y, or sorry, the x value is, because now I can go ahead and label this. 3, negative 20. I'll tell you why that 3 is important in a second. It's like right there. All right, first just checking for understanding on this. This vertex, we can also call it the what? What did we learn today? What's the inflection. inflection point. That's where it was. It's the change from increasing or decreasing. Okay. And then, okay, here's the key. Here's the key for the homework and the classroom. This is the key point. Here is my vertex at 3. 3 for x, right? So really all I care about is what's happening when things are less than 3 and when our values are greater than 3. So let's just look at our value here. Less than 3 on this side, is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Okay, so I know that it's decreasing. At x is less than 3. x is less than 3, it's decreasing. I've labeled where it's decreasing. Guess what we're going to do for increasing? 
I excreted into it. Or, yeah. I didn't quite hear you. X is greater than 3. Good, good, good. X is greater than 3, it's increasing. Now, if you have a hard time remembering which one is increasing, or sorry, greater than or less than, then my riddle, it's still right here. My riddle is, what is less than 3? If you know it right off the bat, let other people, let other people guess. So what numbers are less than 3? Maybe a lot of people, a lot of people usually say two, say one. Those are correct. Those are correct, but this is kind of related to when your thumbs hurt from texting all, all day. Does that ever happen? Are you guys' thumbs just buff? Yeah. Wait, what? I use my fingers. Oh, you do? I use my thumbs. Maybe that's my problem. That's why my thumbs hurt or don't. Nice, the keyboard detects. All right, bring it back, bring it back. So, what's less than three? Less than three. This is the less than symbol. And this is the number three. And it makes a heart. Right? Now, you'll never forget this now, because what if you put, if you sent your, uh, your text and you put this, Right. What are they? What are they gonna think? I don't know. Less than three. Less than three is a heart. That's the main point. That's gonna help us remember. It'll help us remember that x is less than three. It's decreasing. X is greater than three. It's increasing. Greater than three is hilarious somehow. I don't. I don't. You guys are imaginative. Is that all we're right? All right. Uh, that's all. That's all it is. I'd like to give a shout out to USSR, right in the back. <laughs> and I need you guys to subscribe to my channel. Does anyone else think they should subscribe? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. All right. That's it. Good job.